Okay, hi all, welcome to the Jenkins governance meeting. Um, today is August 12th and we have two contributors on the call, Mark Waite and me. So I guess that's all for today, though maybe somebody will join us uh, during uh, the meeting. Um, we have a few items in the agenda for today. So firstly, we will discuss some news, including uh, the duration at CDF and uh, the recent LCS release. And we had a topic for selecting a new term for Jenkins master uh, as a replacement for Jenkins up as a single entity. Uh, we were supposed to make a final decision today, but uh, right now we don't have a quorum, I believe, for this topic. So uh, unless uh, a significant number of contributors joins, I believe that we will postpone it uh, until the next governance meeting on August 26. And we also have a topic about uh, Jenkins governance board and officer elections. So Mark, do you have any other topics? No other topics for me, although I'm interested in the governance board topic, even if we don't have quorum, because um, I think that's hearing your ideas would be a good thing. Next meeting is, uh, well, yeah, August 26th. Okay, uh, let's start from the beginning of the agenda. So yeah, the first important item is that uh, we are now officially a graduated project at Continuous Delivery Foundation. So this is an effort which has been started uh, two months ago. And before that, uh, there was also a lot of foundation work uh, towards general alignment with Continuous Delivery Foundation. If you're interested to know more about uh, this work, there is a thread in the developer mailing list, which I forgot to link. Okay, everything is well on my laptop. Okay, yeah. So this is a mailing list thread. So what it means for us is that now we are officially a graduated project at Continuous Delivery Foundation. We are the first project to graduate. Uh, it means that we are fully compliant with um, uh, uh, CDF graduation criteria, which you can find on this uh, page, uh, CD Foundation Talk Project Lifecycle. Basically, it sets up a number of uh, process requirements, including uh, having uh, um, a board with uh, multiple uh, representing uh, companies. Um, and just a second, uh, what else? Um, and then uh, having documentation about governance, decision making, and etc. Also, uh, we need to show that uh, we have a healthy number of commuters and the project is growing and being adopted more and more. And also, there are uh, process changes like having uh, good documentation. Um, and also uh, achieving code infrastructure initiative best practices, which sets a number of requirements, for example, for code quality, for issue reporting, for issue triage, et cetera, et cetera. So these are criteria we had to pass. And uh, if you were following the mailing list, we actually have a checklist for this criteria. So you can just refer to this Google doc, which covers what we did in detail. There are some summary in the emails. So you can uh, find them here. And actually there was a lot of uh, work included. So it wasn't just uh, putting uh, green checks. We actually had to improve a lot in our processes and in our documentation. So regardless of uh, the status at CDF, it was beneficial to the Jenkins project and to the Jenkins community. So thanks a lot to all contributors who were working on that. We have dozens of contributors. I believe I have a list here actually. Yeah, I do. Uh, it's probably not the full list, uh, but yeah, thanks to everyone who contributed to the effort as reviewers or as uh, code slash documentation contributors. And you can find more about what changed uh, in the project uh, and why we did it after all here. So this is about the process and there is additional benefit to the project is actually additional uh, coverage in social media. So for example, Canadian Delivery Foundation has posted its own announcement, uh, which uh, got some traction. So you can uh, go here and uh, you can find uh, some summaries, you can find uh, testimonials from uh, different uh, contributors, including uh, uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation members, contributors, and also Jenkins users. So I check out this blog post. And uh, CDF has also launched a marketing campaign, uh, including some promotions and uh, uh, newsletters. 
So you can refer to this newsletter, and here you can find uh, well, basically some summary. So for example, you can find um, a number of articles which were posted on the Continuous Delivery Foundation site, thanks to all contributors who were working on that. Also, yeah, there are some cool content like comment strip, uh, additional uh, um, video. Take a look at that. And yeah, there are more events happening. So if you're interested, please check out this page. And yeah, uh, what else about that? Yeah, there is also a blog post by Mark about uh, the documentation upgrades. So if you're interested in improving Jenkins documentation, please take a look. And uh, as in any other area, we invite everyone to contribute. Okay. So, any additional comments um, about uh, that? Maybe Mark, you could uh, share your insights. Yeah, I thought I think it's been a great experience to go through it. The process improvements that CDF inspired have been a help, and mm -hmm. we're delighted. Really good results. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, going to other news. I was actually thinking about organizing a happy hour for CDF graduation. But yeah, I kind of expected this level of participation in the mid-August because yeah, Europe is just desolated because everyone is on vacation. Uh, it's pretty much the same in the United States. Uh, so yeah, maybe we should actually move it uh, to late August uh, or beginning of September, but I definitely want to have a kind of celebration party for that. I was actually about to drink it at the next governance meeting, but yeah, since we are likely to have terminology topic at the next governance meeting, I will probably uh, schedule a new meeting. I like that. I think we should, we should celebrate it. That's a great idea. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, other news. Uh, today we had a new LTS release. Uh, this LTS release included a, a number of new security fixes in the Jenkins core and also in several plugins, including uh, Pipeline Maven integration plugin, which is used by more than 20,000 users. And, uh, yeah, well, email extension, I guess it's even more. So, let's take a look how many. my life. Okay. I always forget uh, artifact idea for this plugin and I guess I'm not the only one. Uh, I think you need the leading the, the leading E on email. All right. So probably uh, something uh, to improve in uh, searchability for this particular plugin. Right. So, a bit more than 20,000 users. Yeah, 10 times so, more. That's impressive. Yeah, pretty much every Jenkins instance. So thanks a lot uh, to the security team and the contributors who fixed uh, these issues. In addition to that, we are happy to announce that the new Windows installer is officially in GA. Uh, it was originally announced uh, something like one year ago by Alex Earl. Um, it was, uh, well, even more, it was submitted for evaluation, uh, but uh, due to process issues, due to the release automation issues, we had to postpone the uh, release of this installer until um, uh, the completion of the core release automation story. Core release automation story was completed uh, last uh, month. So since that, uh, we ship everything uh, in automated way and we had an online meetup last week. So uh, check it out. But yeah, finally, this story is in GE. And it means that yeah, now you get better installers, well, no 32-bit support, but it's quite aligned with our support policies for Windows. Okay, there will, will see a few additional changes, but uh, these are key ones. And if you update this, uh, make sure to update your signing keys, like suggested in our big guidelines. So just follow them and everything will be fine. So anything else to add about uh, this LTS release? No, looking forward to people adopting it. They can also continue upgrading on their Windows servers 
using the internal upgrade. So the upgrade guide describes that as well. They should they should use whatever works well for them. Okay. So yeah, upgrade guidelines uh, are available for this LCS release, and yeah, you can see that they include a number of changes. Okay. So this is one item, and also we have news about next LCS baseline. Oh right, yes. So it will be two two, two hundred forty nine. Uh, yeah, it's selected. So what it means uh, for users, uh, we have um, a number of uh, uh, changes. So it's quite recent release um, and in 2.248 we actually had a number of uh, changes including dropping support for the .NET Framework 2 in the Windows services and uh, many other changes related to APIs and uh, uh, develop well yeah API changes also some other items and improvements so it's a quite recent uh, release it's expected uh, the release is expected in uh, one month so it will be September 9th or 10th I don't remember the exact date, uh, but yeah, the release candidate uh, should be available in two weeks as usual. So if anyone is interested, you can uh, start from exploring this weekly release. Yeah, you can see that original community ratings were quite bad. And for example, I still know about a few regressions for Windows services uh, I need to fix and the portal dot one. Uh, but uh, yeah, the release itself is available and we will appreciate any feedback from users. Well, and, and that's one where early testing, particularly of user interface areas, there are some significant improvements in UI there that we would love to have tested. So we, we encourage people as the release candidate becomes available to help with the testing. Uh, yeah, G is on, I believe it's September 10th or so. No, actually September 10th is, uh, Friday, so it's September 8th. Yeah, speaking of that, I guess we need to organize an online meetup um, uh, to these days uh, to present uh, new features, etc. Um, so right, we should. You want to you want to put an action item on on me for that one, Oleg? I did the last online meetup for 2.235.1. This one probably justifies a similar kind of introducing 2.249. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, if you could organize it, it would be great, especially since since I am on vacation from September 1st to September 10th. Mm -hmm. So we either do it uh, one week later or, or you, if you organize it, it, would be great. Yep. And I assume it's okay if it's very near the GA, that just before it, a few days before it would be fine, or the day of GA, it doesn't have to be one or two okay. weeks prior. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have uh, to be one, two weeks prior for sure. I would actually give it um, a few days to collect community ratings. Mm. So, that, so uh, maybe make it after the initial release. Good. Yeah, because in this case, we firstly can add additional details about the experience regressions. Well, fingers crossed we won't have regressions, but mm. uh, so I would rather schedule it, uh, let's say, too early or maybe it's something like September 13th, 14th, so uh, early next week after the LCS release. Great. And we have quite a number of features. So what we have, yep. Yeah, uh, so it's UX improvements, uh, new installer uh, for Windows, uh, also uh, new Windows services. Mm -hmm. Well, and the deprecation, yeah, that's the deprecation of the old .NET stuff, yeah. Well, deprecation of old .NET stuff also implies some changes. For example, now you can easily install um, uh, Windows services without having to elevate permissions because now uh, the dialog works properly. Uh, there is a bunch of other improvements. Uh, but yeah, what else we have? Uh, so for example, dark theme, I guess it would be totally justified there uh, because yeah, it's uh, the first LTS way we have that and uh, plugin uh, installation manager in Docker. It's a story Alex and team we're working on. Mm. Yep. 
and yeah the other any other major changes well i guess so right we'll need to collect them and and mm. present them in the meetup exactly so i'm just browsing through the change log but yeah it's uh, the cutoff from the previous baseline but yeah we can uh, take a look maybe external fingerprint storage though we will have a separate meetup for that uh, but yeah Okay, so uh, yeah, anything else about the next baseline? Okay, nothing from me. Yeah, Alex, anything from you? Uh, no, not on that topic. Mm, okay. Yeah, and so I, we have three people on the call. Should we actually press it with selecting a new term? Or should we... I think we should. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Um, I, I would like to have more mm -hmm. people here, but we, we made the um, proposal that we'd make the, um, or have the vote in this meeting. So people were aware of that. Yeah. So I think if they're not here, then they're allowing whoever is here to make the decision. <laughs> well, I've heard that we had uh, more than 100 votes. Yeah, it was yes. uh, 120, I think, yeah. or something close to that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, 130 actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, so community votes, and basically it's uh, votes through the mailing list, so we we're not promoting uh, the votes too much in public. Mm, okay. So for discussion on this, just before we do mm -hmm. vote, so I sent out that um, table of um, translations. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully I didn't butcher the Russian translations. Uh, too much because I know nothing about Russian. So, <laughs> yeah, it was sent uh, to the board mailing list. I doubt it. That's correct. Yeah. So, if you don't mind, I will stop screen sharing and can copy paste it. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that there is any sensitive discussion in this particular thread, but yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So the, the the one drawback, if you will, to many of these terms is that they, uh, in um, many of the languages, they have a gender assigned um, or associated with them, um, like languages like German or Spanish or French, I believe, all have um, like a, a gender association with a noun. Um, I'm more familiar with the German part of that than either Spanish or French, but um, that was something that we kind of wanted to um, think about as we voted on these terms. Um, so that, that would be something we, we can discuss um, or, or, or whatever um, in, yeah, so we can look at the, mm -hmm. can you make that bigger at all? Uh, Oleg? Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, please. There you go. So okay. these are just these are just running directly through um, Google Translate, um, and then mm -hmm. for languages that I was somewhat familiar with, I um, I kind of chose the one that kind of aligned with the idea of the English word. I, I think um, number seven, um, because of the connotations of the word Führer, we should probably cut that one out completely. Well, I guess uh, even in German, uh, there could be other synonyms. So it's, That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's uh, not uh, uh, the final blocker. So s same, for example, uh, yeah, for coordinator, uh, originally there was another vote proposed, but I guess... I, Oh no, for uh, controller. So here in the table you have regular, uh, mm -hmm. but there is also controller, uh, which is True. just with a K, yeah. starts with K. So yeah, synonyms are available for all languages. Uh, so these are in order of the community vote. 
um, did mm -hmm. the same table. So controller was the top um, item in the community vote um, by, I think, a fair margin. Um, yeah. So uh, you can uh, take a look. So basically, the closest uh, vote was manager, but it loses its controller something like three times. Right. Yeah, basically manager, coordinator, primary, they got approximately the same amount of uh, votes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there would be three choices. And after that, basically, there is a huge gap until the next votes. Right. So for me personally, and from what we discussed in the board, uh, I guess there is no specific reason to not select controller like we got uh, as community votes. At the same time, uh, we still need to, to talk about uh, the localization issue because yeah, for controller, as basically for any other word, we still have issues with uh, genders in our languages, or well, languages which have genders. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to, how do you fix that? Yeah, so right. regarding uh, that, uh, during the last uh, few weeks, I reached out to native speakers, uh, including French, Spanish, Italian, and well, Russian. Though for Russian, it's quite easy. Um, so basically, what I got from everyone is that we need to select one gender and to stick with it. Because if we try to somehow reference two genders, uh, it will over complicate our technical documentation and make it uh, more confusing to users. Okay. So this is the first feedback I've got. The second feedback, which is a bit more mixed, is what the gender to choose. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, so recommendation. Uh, so for that, uh, um, there was mixed feedback. So one of common items uh, in the responses was that uh, let's use masculine gender because uh, Jenkins Bandler logo is masculine, so it would be aligned. Um, but yeah, the alternative suggestions is to actually use feminine term because uh, we could. Um, so yeah, and uh, potentially it uh, uh, somehow mitigates uh, the fact that Jenkins log um, yeah, has a gender, which is not a common case in the current products. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, the, these are two options on the table. Uh, personally, I would rather abstain from this decision, uh, what to choose. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just sharing feedback I've got. So I, th I think we're saying that we're the term we're going to choose is controller, uh, but now we need to determine the um, localization outcome of that. Is that what you're proposing, Oleg? Mm, uh, yes. Okay. I, I I agree choosing controller based on um, the feedback from community as well as just um, it. For me, it makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. that, that was the one I was kind of that I voted for <laughs> so as my number one well I didn't but at the same time I'm happy to stick to the community decision and as yeah. I said at the previous meeting I am really uh, looking forward to call my Jenkins file runner uh, master edition a microcontroller so nice that's pretty I like it <laughs> Uh, yeah so I'm happy uh, to stick with uh, this, this uh, decision Okay. Um, at the same time, uh, yeah, so uh, votes we've got, so basically 95 uh, versus 35 uh, among Jenkins contributors. No, I would say community, not necessarily contributors. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, or uh, voters. So basically we send it to, to user and developer mailing lists. Right. Yeah. Also six, right? Uh, yes, also. Okay. So uh, regarding uh, Jenkins governance board, I believe that we got three plus ones uh, for controller. 
and uh, two abstained. Do I represent it correct, uh, Alex? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, yeah. Yet they can, so I haven't seen uh, additional votes um, in the mailing list after we closed uh, the voting. So let me double check. Uh, okay. Yeah, no additional votes. And yeah, uh, Mark, what is your vote? Controller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no solution for gendered languages. Uh, Italiano, sea, così. It, it exists in Italian, and I don't know how to solve it. Okay. So. Uh, off the cuff, I would say let's choose the feminine gender for those specific reasons you talked about, Oleg, but that's just mm -hmm. off the cuff. So what would be our steps regarding, oh, sorry, regarding the gender? Because uh, one thing we could decide it right away today um, another way is to actually drop it to the mailing list and to see what would be the feedback because uh, process wise and change wise uh, I don't think that we need uh, to have a decision on localization today. I agree on that. I don't, I don't know if, do we, I mean, do we need to open it up to the, or do we want to open it up to the whole community? I, I, foresee that actually being a, a harder conversation than the replacement of the term. But I mean, maybe I'm just um, pessimistic. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not sure. For example, uh, if you take Russian language uh, tradition, well, uh, Russian language has uh, three genders, uh, but some words have to have a gender, including uh, controller. At the same time, historically, a masculine term is uh, used for gender neutral term mm. uh, for such items. So, for example, if we suggested to use feminine for that, I guess uh, it would be a lot of misunderstanding in the Russian speaking community. Though I'm again not sure whether we can come up with a decision which would fit all languages. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. what I know about Italian supports that. I'm not sure that I could, I could sign off on Italian attempting to use the, the inverted gender, the wrong gender for a term that already has a gender associated with it in, in Italian as a noun. So uh, could we defer the gender question to the localizers who are proposing a localization with- but, Sorry, go ahead. The idea being that they choose it based on what their understanding is of their lo their locale. The um, so under the topic up above, uh, gender you have recommendation to use a single gender to avoid complicating documentation. Is that a single gender per language or a single gender gender overall? Mm, yeah, this is something we could uh, agree on. Because you, you, yeah, you said you. You solicited some feedback from native speakers. Was that um, was that recommendation that that you use a single gender across all languages, or was it? I haven't asked for this oh. question specifically. You had a, a comment up above. Yeah, um, I, so I was just yeah. wondering what that was referring to. Yep. So I asked for feedback about uh, their particular genders, uh, well, uh, genders and their particular languages. Okay. I got, I got some feedback how it could be written uh, in general neutral term. At the same time, yeah, almost every response I've got was about that uh, it would be better to stick to a single gender. Per language or, or across uh, well, all languages? That's my question. I, uh, yeah, I haven't asked about uh, okay, all gotcha. specifically. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in Mark's camp where that's um, the gender is kind of left to the localization folks. Yeah, the same point. So, for example, for uh, Chinese, it's not a problem because there is Chinese localization seek, and we can easily defer uh, this decision to the seek. Uh, but uh, other languages have no such entities. So, well, what if we, yeah, I'm not sure how to organize it. How does Kubernetes solve this? Because they use control plane or something similar, right? Mm -hmm. Is I that have no idea. so? The, how do we, you know, how do other open source projects manage that or this? And are we going to go in and um, like, are we going to do a global search room place for the term, you know, master in various different languages with just something else or what, you know? So I don't, at least for me, on, on the, I don't intend to do that because my experience attempting to as a non-native speaker do localization has almost always been an abject failure. The native speakers prefer exact phrasing and exact terminology that I, I inevitably as a non-native speaker fail to, to comprehend. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I still would leave it to the localization communities, localization individual contributors, if you will. If, if they are contributing a localization, they get to choose how they attempt to translate the word controller into their language. So basically your proposal is first contributor who makes the decision, right? Right, so, right. And that, that may be suboptimal, but as a matter of, of course, I think it's, it's, a, it's an approach. Okay, or we can, uh, for example, say that uh, there are two main targets, let's say Jenkins IO website or Jenkins core, whomever submits a pull request in a language, we kick off this discussion and CC all known contributors of, who use this language, and basically stall this pull request until there is consensus. Would mm -hmm. it make sense? Yeah, that would be fine. Mm. Yeah, that works. Mm, I kick uh, the discussion when uh, there is a Jenkins core or uh, Jenkins IO uh, pull request. Native speakers are expected uh, to reach consensus. Well, this uh, process is still quite difficult. Yeah, uh, maybe also the mailing list. Yeah, at the same time, uh, for example, I can imagine uh, plugin maintainers uh, doing changes ahead of us. And we had uh, already had uh, plugin maintainers uh, changing documentation for Jenkins master to other terms, not necessarily controller. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that. At the same time, yeah, I guess what we will need to do is to track uh, these decisions and maybe to have a page uh, with our recommendations. That's a good idea. Yeah. Introduce a page with uh, uh, term recommendations. In various um, languages, right? Yeah. So yeah, we already have a glossary page. So maybe we could somehow inject it uh, there. I'm not sure how, well, one easy way is to just add a hyperlink or maybe add a expanding section. So for example, we can keep it as this and then uh, say localizations. So you will click a button and then it expands and shows you uh, recommended localizations for different languages. Would it make sense? Yeah, I think that sounds good. Um, yeah. 
I believe it will uh, require some uh, implementation work because I'm not sure whether we have a standard macro, uh, macro for that. Uh, but yeah, it's not a big deal to implement it if you decide to do so. So I'm not sure who would take connection item to implement it. Uh, you can give it to me. I don't know necessarily how to do it all, but I'll um, I'll take a look into it. Well, we need uh, more, more uh, example experts. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so kick off the discussion when uh, there is uh, a Jenkins core or Jenkins IO pull request. Uh, 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 so stall uh, the pull request and uh, I kick over the discussion. Okay. So both uh, Jenkins IO and Jenkins Core sub, uh, support the on hold label. Label. So mailing list, right? Yeah. Should it be a developer on documentation seek? Um, that's a good question. Opinions? That would be fine. Yeah, that would be okay. Which one? The well, developer list is more likely to de to be detected by plugin maintainers and by localizers than the docsig. I don't remember mm -hmm. the last time I saw a docs mailing list posting from someone who's a localizer. Okay, so developer mailing list then. Mm -hmm. uh, or in a local community mailing list of present. Ah, yes, uh, yeah, right. Just to Chinese, comment on that. The Chinese is an example. Well, uh, Chinese is a good example. The problem with that, uh, that we have uh, mailing lists in other languages. So if you go to this page, so for example, Brazil, uh, Japanese, Korean, yeah, Chinese, uh, my better that uh, these mailing lists are not very active for these days, but I'm happy to be wrong. Let's say, so for example, Brazil, yeah, I guess it's Brazilian, right? So yeah, last update, actually May 13th, but before that it was previous year. So for Japanese, it's pretty much like that. So I guess it means that Chinese is the only honorable exception. Well, yeah, I can, well, in Russian, we don't have a mailing list, we have Telegram chats, which could work, but yeah, in Russian, it's still quite straightforward. So I wouldn't expect too many problems. Uh, or in a local or Chinese. So, yeah, at least. Okay, so would it work? Yeah, I think that's good. I like that, making a decision without making a decision. So, <laughs> well, I believe that it's uh, the best we can do delegated uh, to contributors who are actually familiar with the matter. Uh, term recommendations, yeah. Okay, so I guess it means that Jenkins controller is now official. Yep. Um, the joint recommendation uh, for localizations. Yeah, fortunately, in uh, English, we can just use it, and I believe that we already use it in the documentation. Yeah. Okay, so anything else? So I don't think the, so. We are quickly running out of time. So my proposal would be to just quickly touch the governor's board and officer elections and to push the rest of the topics to the next meeting. 
Is it fine with you? Yeah. Okay, so for governance board and officer elections, yeah, so we think that we actually need to have them. Uh, and uh, so we have a page uh, documenting the uh, process here. In project, so, it's the wrong page. Um, yeah, the Jenkins board election process. So I guess uh, the current terms uh, were effective on uh, December 3rd or so. The current, uh, yeah. sorry, uh, I forgot the word. No, they can't. Uh, no. Oh, officers, maybe? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, the current, yeah, okay. Uh, what the members and officers we announced on the committee. So, uh, to re elect. So, unless something uh, changes, we need to re elect one uh, board member. Uh, Tyler. Uh, Okay, uh, and five officers, right. including Mark. Uh, right. So, yeah, what it means uh, uh, that we actually need to organize the process. Last time it required significant time from us, and the most difficult part was organizing a uh, CIFS vote. So, similar to, to how we ran uh, controller uh, uh, decisions. Uh, but yeah, for controller decisions, it was easy because it was a public vote. So basically anyone using it was eligible to vote. But our um, governance board election process is quite different because it uh, defines eligibility. And what it means so that we cannot just send a public link. Uh, it needs that we uh, have to prepare restricted uh, links for all participants. CIFS supports that. But uh, yeah, what we experienced during the last election is that uh, you cannot just add uh, 100,000 uh, participants like we have in our Jira, in our LDAP database. And our process basically requires us to send a, an email to every uh, um, user in the LDAP database. Uh, then uh, they subscribe uh, for voting. Uh, then uh, we send them another email uh, with uh, voting link specifically for this particular person, then they vote and then we count the results. So last year it was quite difficult to implement all of that. And the, yeah, one of the topics which we brought up at the retrospective, that probably we shouldn't do elections like that anymore. Uh, and it brings up the question is what you want to do with the next elections. Yeah, I remember uh, Olivier spent a lot of time, and other people, not just him, but there was a lot of time spent trying to figure out who had what emails and stuff like that. Uh, so I would definitely like to avoid that, you know. Yeah. But I don't, I, I'm not sure how to do it since, I mean, do enough people read the user and dev mailing lists that so you can, but you have to have, it has to be logged in by a, a single person, right? That's the, what yeah, we're going yeah. for. And also we need to somehow identify eligibility of such a person. Because for example, uh, yeah, last uh, voting, we defined a cutoff period. So why it's needed is because otherwise somebody could just create, let's say, 100,000 accounts. Right. And basically, rig the elections. So we define a cutoff date. Uh, we basically uh, base uh, eligibility on that. So there are two obvious issues. One issue that basically we need to define a cutoff date early. We need to query our data to prepare this mailing list. Querying data becomes tricky because yeah, we know that we lost uh, three months of all database history. 
So what it means that uh, some contributors uh, may be eligible at the same time they are not in the database. So we will need to use alternate channels to make the announcement and to provide a way for them to actually mitigate that somehow. Uh, yeah, we did uh, alternate uh, channel for that last uh, year, but I doubt that anyone used it. So uh, the process is quite complicated. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it would be great to consider that, especially if we talk about um, identity management uh, immigration. So the topic which has been discussed is the infrastructure mining list, because one of the options on the table there is basically using uh, Linux uh, Foundation uh, user uh, database and uh, migrating there so that we don't have to maintain our own database. But it makes elections even more difficult uh, because uh, you won't be able to really track uh, contributors, etc. Well, probably we could, but it will require some additional implementation. So this is a topics which I wanted to brought up. Again, we don't need to make any decisions uh, uh, today, but we definitely need start to start planning for that. Uh, because yeah, if let's say elections happen in November, so that uh, we respect one uh, year terms, it means that yeah, uh, let's say in the beginning of October we should have um, a finalized process which got a consensus in the community, uh, so that it doesn't happen on the last day. Yeah. So, Oleg, like, are we are we open to considering? removing eligibility requirements entirely considering the voting process on controller on on the use of the new terminology well uh, again uh, it's a problem is whether we are concerned that somebody rigs election uh, because yeah for uh, for public votes it's easy you just uh, I guess clean your cookies change your IP somehow it tracks your participation by AP. And voila, you can vote again, again and again. Right. Uh, and that, that is... So I don't think that we can drop eligibility requirement completely. At the same okay. time, we could probably redefine that. Uh, one of the potential uh, ways to redefine that would be easy, but I don't think appropriate is just to take maintainer database and, for example, a GitHub contributor database. It's something we can do easily. At the same time, I don't think that uh, GitHub represents uh, the Jenkins community. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and again, it brings up another problem. So okay, we so still uh, need to have a mixed approach. Probably we could just uh, create an early sign up form, starting uh, reaching out to contributors through different channels and introduce a way to verify eligibility. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know how to do that, but definitely removing eligibility requirement entirely is not an option for me. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Uh, so personally, I just uh, lean towards uh, just dumping uh, user databases we know and uh, announcing it to the mailing list. Uh, so maybe mailing list, it would be a great start. And we hopefully we'll get enough uh, people to sign up. And then we can do the same, for example, for blog, uh, as blog posts, as social media, and uh, you can filter uh, people who sign up somehow. So for, yeah, for example, we can require anyone who responds to provide the Jenkins uh, uh, account ID or GitHub ID so that we can verify their contribution. Okay. It would uh, still require manual work, but it's feasible, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that sounds like a good approach. Hey. I'm sure the, the the devil is in the details, as they say. Yeah, but 
yeah, even our, our previous process was a kind of, let's say, uh, not ideal because you can be a contributor to the Jenkins project, but it doesn't mean that you need uh, a Jenkins account ID, especially now when uh, many components moved to GitHub issues. Uh, when basically you don't need a Jenkins account for anything except Jenkins Jira right now, unless you're admin or whatever contributor with infrastructure access. So, yeah, I don't think that our current process is totally inclusive uh, when it comes to the Jenkins community as is. So, so in this public sign up plus verification, you're envisioning that if they have a GitHub account, they would be verified or no, it's that they need to be somehow involved in one of the Jenkins repositories before you would grant them. I, I guess mm -hmm. it needs more discussion. We're probably beyond time and therefore- Yeah, we're slightly beyond time. So, but yeah, if you have a GitHub account, you can query Jenkins GitHub organizations and you can uh, have a proof of contribution, for example, pull request, comment, uh, review, whatever, we can define this criteria later, uh, but we can uh, define. Same for Jenkins Jira. Uh, we have account ID, we can verify that uh, there was, let's say, a comment, new issue created, issue addressed. Again, we can verify a fact of contribution. For the rest, uh, yeah, we can use manual ways. For example, please, if you have never contributed using GitHub or Jenkins Jira, please uh, describe your contributions and provide the ways to verify that. So something like that. Got it. Okay. Thank you for the clarity. Yeah, so what is my plan is to actually think about it a bit more and come up with a proposal in the developer mind at least early to start this discussion. But yeah, I definitely think that we should move on and stop relying on uh, all uh, um, uh, Confluence account numbers. Especially since we definitely know some contributors who can over 15 times, especially our infrastructure team members because they had multiple accounts for testing. Uh, well, I totally believe that uh, they don't uh, maliciously use it. And we actually did some verification uh, during the previous election process to ensure that uh, there is no such duplicates. At the same time, yeah, again, yeah, it's potential uh, for changes we cannot verify. Okay. So yeah, it's, we are five minutes over time. Uh, do we have anything else to discuss on this topic? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'll try to start uh, mailing this discussion once uh, I finalize uh, my proposals uh, uh, up to a way that it looks sustainable to me. Or maybe I will run it through the Jenkins board and officers first. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Okay. So it definitely doesn't happen uh, next week, but yeah, maybe later. Okay. So, and I will move these topics uh, to the next meeting. Okay. So, Alex, would you be able uh, to summarize uh, the decisions uh, on the terminology? Yeah, I'll send out a reply to the mailing list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Because I guess it's the only time sensitive topic in terms of communications. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, then thanks for your time. And yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, to uh, everyone who participated in the terminology discussions and decisions. So great uh, to see this topic concluded. Well, these follow-ups for localizations, but yeah, we have a pass forward. So thanks everyone. Thanks, Oleg. Right. Thanks. thanks, Mark. Yep. Thanks. Bye.